Here we have the Volvo S90 Recharge, and I got it because it might be the best plug-in hybrid on the market. That's not what we're gonna look at first. Holy freak. The sound system in this thing is friggin' amazing. Just come on over here, Brandon, look at this. It's a $3,000 option, but holy ball, is it ever worth it? I think this one down here is made of Kevlar. This one's aluminum, that one's aluminum. Covered in this nice stainless steel, looks amazing. In the center, we have a tweeter and then two center speakers. There's 19 in total, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, 16, 17, 18, and then the start of the show. Back in here, we have a 9.8 inch subwoofer that's bonded directly to the chassis. Just come and look at this, Brandon. It being bonded directly to the chassis means it transmits all of those vibrations through the entire car straight to your butt. Now, like, I've felt a lot of bass in a car before, but like, you know, it's not the same when it's like your buddy's Jetta and he has two 20s in the trunk and the lid comes off when you play it. This is like the most refined sub bass that I've ever felt in a car. It'll make you go to the movies and be like, huh, that's, that's a pretty casual subwoofer they have there. I wish it was better. Let's have a listen. I went ahead and got a Tidal subscription just for these speakers. Normally like Spotify quality is more than good enough. In here you notice the difference. <laughs> It's, it's just so good. I'm sorry that my mic probably isn't really doing it justice. Now, right now I have it on, you know, the stage mode with the subwoofer just cranked because I really like the bass, like. So good. But if we come over here and put it in studio mode and reset it, it's the flattest EQ I've ever heard in a car. Well, I didn't even know that like it tailed off like that before. You just hear these little details in your songs that you've never heard before. It's absolutely amazing. We're going to do proper sound testing stuff on it later. Uh, I'm guessing based off my ears that it's almost completely flat in this and we'll verify that with a graph right here. Anyway, let's look at the actual car bits. <laughs> now we have the inscription model of the S90, which is just straight grandpa spec like all of this chrome up here it does look really good like all the volvos for the last 10 years have looked great especially like we have the nice thor's hammer headlight awesome i would get the r spec it just blacks everything out moving around over here right here we have our charging port so this gets you what like 60 kilometers of range pure electric now i am a little bit disappointed there's no fast charger but again like Whatever, it's a plug-in hybrid. If you don't fast charge, you just use the engine, it's fine. Let's take a look at that. In total, we have 450 horsepower and 312 of it is coming from this guy right here. It's a two liter four cylinder that makes 312 horsepower thanks to a big old snail on the back there. Now, this used to come as a supercharged and turbocharged engine. I'm really glad that it only has a turbo now, like, you don't need the supercharger when you have the electric and it's just one less thing to fail in a car that has so many things that can fail. Get the 10 year warranty. Wow, this, <laughs> this hood's really high, look at that. That would probably hit the roof in my parking garage, holy shit. Anyway. Ugh. The rear wheels are driven entirely by electric. So they contribute 143 horsepower, but 228 foot pounds of torque. Now. That's just awesome because you can take off, the electric gets you going, and then by the time that like it's starting to peter out, the turbo spooled up and you can just whoosh, rocket it. Now it's kind of down here, and you can't really see it, but whatever. Trunk's nice and big, you can fit like four or five bodies in there, easy. Our first really big problem though is in this area. The trunk might be big, but this is a Volvo when it's not a wagon. That's, that's just dumb. Like, why would you buy the S90 when the V90 exists? Volvos, wagons, Volvo Canada. Get us a V90, please. I want to drive it. Anyway, Brandon, you're really wrong. Wagons are sick. Let's get in the back seat. Back here, we have the executive seating. So I can do fun things like 
annoy the person in front of me by just moving their seat back and forth. You know, want more leg room? Move them up. Want to crush them? I can. Excellent. We also have must-haves of saloons, like, you know, the good old peasant blockers here, even blocking the rear peasants. Awesome. We even have control of the sunroof in the back, although I'm not going to do that because uh, I don't think this camera will be too happy about it. Aside from that, we have your typical comforts that you have in luxury cars. You know, you have climate control back here, rear heated seats, ventilated is an option. And okay, you normally don't have this, but there's also a little cigar ashtray. One thing that's kind of weird about this is that in here where you normally have storage, there's a almost none, but there's a good reason for that. All of your batteries are right in here. Now, I appreciate this placement because in some other hybrids, they'll have just a bunch of your trunk space taken up with it, or like you won't be able to push down your seats properly because there's a big old battery in the way. Getting in the driver's seat, like, hot damn it, this is a nice place to be. These are some of the most comfortable seats that I've ever felt in a car. There's heaps of adjustment. You can do length of the seat, the size of the bolsters, lumbar, forward, backward, all of that good stuff. So comfortable, absolutely love it. Everything in here is real genuine leather that cows died for. All of the wood that you see here is actual oak that trees died for. It's all, it's all very nicely put together. I just, it's a very premium spot to be, despite the fact that like, you know, the chrome and the wood and the stuff is, again, very grand paw spec. I appreciate it though. To turn the S90 on, you just turn this little dial to the right and to turn it off. You might expect you'd turn it to the left, but uh, nope, that's also to the right as well. Kind of weird, but uh, whatever. Up front here, we have Android Automotive. It's easily one of the best infotainment systems on the market right now. It works great and you're able to have different people's Google profiles in there and match to your key. So you get in and like your Spotify title, what have you just signs into your account. Freaking awesome. Now, if you want to learn more about Android Automotive, we went into a lot of detail in our Volvo XC40 recharge review, but again, the TLDR, friggin' awesome. The only thing that concerns me is that they haven't added Android Auto or Apple CarPlay into it yet. They say it's coming, but they also said it was coming back when we did the XC40 review in like December. So when will that arrive? Will it ever arrive? Probably. How much do you trust Volvo and Google? For media controls, we get nice physical buttons. And even though the climate control is entirely touchscreen, I don't hate it. Like it works pretty well. I just in general, haven't been annoyed by it. Even my father who's over 60 had no trouble just navigating this and getting it all to work. Good job Volvo, I guess. The funny thing is though, watching reviews from like 2018 when they first put out the system, People had no clue how to use it. They hated it. And now a couple of years later, it's all perfectly fine. Makes sense now. <laughs> to shift into drive, you just pull back on this incredibly fancy Oreo 4 shifter, just like that. And uh, now I'm in neutral. You have to click it twice. It's really stupid. And to get reverse, you have to go forward twice again. I go into neutral on this thing all the time. It should just be one click, it's two, that's dumb Volvo, change it. Thanks to Linksys for sponsoring this video. They wanna help you take your Wi-Fi to the next level with their Hydra Pro 6 router. The Hydra Pro 6 uses 160 megahertz channels on Wi-Fi 6 to deliver up to four times more Wi-Fi capacity compared to older Wi-Fi 5 routers. Their intelligent mesh system ensures that you get a great connection in every corner of your home, and you can also easily set up and control your home internet through the Linksys app, so you can customize your Wi-Fi, see who's online, protect your network, and more. Get your Linksys Hydra Pro 6 router today at the link down below. Let's go though, driving is actually good. In previous versions of the S90, there was a little knob down here that allowed you to easily change your drive modes. Now, Volvo got rid of it, and instead it's now in the infotainment. So if I wanna go to power, we go up like that. Volvo says it's because no one used their drive modes. They look at the data, no one's using it. But Volvo, why do you think people are not using your drive modes? Is it because people don't use them? 
or because your drive mode sucks. Uh, I think it's the latter because even though this has four corner active suspension, I can't tell the difference between power and hybrid and all of the different modes. Like even in my Golf GTI going from sport to comfort, you can really just feel the whole thing go from like tight and wanting to go to just kind of relaxed and sort of glides over bumps. And this you have the suspension and it is well set up, but I just really wish that they allowed you a little bit more range of the suspension and the chassis and everything instead of just, here's what you get. Anyway, do you want to do a little launchy launch, Brandon? Yeah, sure. I haven't done a launch in this yet. It's not the kind of car where you... Oh, wow. It launches pretty hard, damn. There was some wheel spin there. Zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. And <laughs> I think there was some wheel hop in the front and we definitely spun the rears. Damn, that was enjoyable. Did you like that, Brandon? Uh, yes. He did, great. So yeah, this thing is proper fast. Like you put your foot down and just, it just charges. It doesn't do it uh, except for back there when I brake boosted it. It's always very refined. Like you put your foot down and I don't think they're giving you the full electric like all at once. I think they're just smoothing everything out so that you don't have that like, if you've ever been in a Tesla with someone that's a bad driver in one pedal mode, it's an awful time. Speaking of which though, this is as far as I know, the only plug-in hybrid that has proper one pedal driving. You give a little pull back on the shifter and you can go between drive and braking. It's just friggin' awesome. I absolutely love one pedal driving and allows you to kind of get that feel of a manual transmission car in an automatic. Like there's something about the engine braking that I just love. It makes the whole experience better. It allows you to kind of trim your lines as you're dipping into and out of corners. I absolutely love it. And as a bonus, you get more, you know, energy recovery from the braking. So your battery lasts longer. Awesome. Up front, the center display is just awesome. It is very similar to the one that we found in like the Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6, but it's just so much better executed. So through the steering wheel, I can clearly see everything that's up there. And in the center, you only have two options, uh, either nothing or Google Maps. I just keep Google Maps on there all the time. It is just great to be able to look here, have your directions and your passenger can screw around with the infotainment and you don't have to worry about missing a stop. Oh, here's a speed bump. How is it going to handle this? Let's just hit it. Okay, that was actually fine. Larger bumps, it filters out no problem. At low speeds, it can be a little bit crashy. Like it's nothing like an electric car or most electric cars, but there's a little bit more harshness than I would expect in like a big executive saloon. I understand why they did it though. Once you get on the highway and up to above about 100 kilometers per hour, the suspension in this thing is just sublime. Okay, we found some corners, here we go. Whoa. If you really want to, it can be quite rapid. Like you can dip it into a corner here. It is quite fast, like almost shockingly so given the size of the thing. But when you like really push it like right there, you can feel the whole thing just being like, why? Why are you doing this? You could be driving smoothly right now and you should drive smoothly. And then you kind of just do. It's honestly like a better B-Road Cruiser than a lot of sports cars that I've been in because in those the whole time I'm just thinking, wow, this would be really great if I could go 200 kilometers per hour right now. Whereas instead in this, it's like, hmm, I'm happy going 120. Uh, what else do we have here, Brandon? Oh, assists. So the steering assist in this is quite good. The problem is that I never use it since to activate it, you have to go in driving, scroll down here, and then enable steering assist. If they just had a button on the steering wheel, I would use it all the time because it does work pretty well. But at the same time, if I have to go in the menus, effort, yeah, I don't do it. The adaptive cruise control also is pretty good. It's excellent up until, I don't know, you get down to about 
20, 30 kilometers per hour, and then it can be a little bit jerky. If you're following a Lexus with like a proper adaptive cruise, it's gonna be nice and smooth. But if you're behind someone that has an N on the back of their car, it's not gonna be so good of a time. Overall, driving this has just been fantastic. Like ever since I've got it, I've loved it. Everyone else that's gotten in it has just loved the car. I'm really surprised. Like just everything feels really well thought through when so many other vehicles feel like they're just slapping all the tech in for the sake of it being tech and fancy. In Canada, this starts around 70 grand and as spec, it comes in at 90. There's a lot of other cars that are available for $90,000. Uh, I don't know. I don't drive saloons all the time, Brandon. <laughs> Do we even give good consumer advice on that? You probably live in a different country anyway. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> anyway, the sound system of this thing is freaking amazing, so I'm going to get back to listening to it. Uh, have a great day. See you later. Volvo, if you want to give someone a V90 for a long-term review, I, I know someone. See ya. Yeah, 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 yeah.